I'm going to show you in this video how to prepare your Excel spreadsheet calculating <clears throat> risk and return for your portfolios. Okay, so we have a spreadsheet that was prepared for you just to fill up with information from this, your stocks. Um, we have in the first worksheet the S&P 500 information over the past five years. Okay, so we're going to use for uh, each stock a historical data of five years to calculate the expected return using holding period of return concept learning class and the notion of a risk defined by the standard deviation. Okay, uh, so this in this page you have nothing to do is already done. We are going to use this page. We're going to use this page, the information inside of the S&P 500 to compare to the other stocks because the S&P is our benchmark in our portfolio. Remember that you, your mission or mission of portfolio manager is to beat the benchmark index in our case is the S&P 500. So what we have to do is to go and for each page of stock and fill up the information with dividends in price for every stock over the past five years. Okay. The formulas are already defined here, we have nothing to do, we have just to pay attention just to put information on these two columns, uh, dividend and price over the past five years. We're going to do this for your five stock, your four stocks, okay? When you get this information, we move to the portfolio page. I'm going to show how to populate this, this page with information you're going to prepare uh, doing a stock by stock. So let's start by the uh, McDonald's. Uh, I'm going to use McDonald's as an example. You are going to use your four stocks, the five stocks you have bought uh, last week. So the information uh, consists on using annual data from September. Okay, let me put it here. From September of the previous year to September of current year. That's what we're going to do of in every year because we start your portfolio now at 1st of September 2016. Okay, so uh, where am I going to capture this information? I'm going to Yahoo Finance and I put it here. Let's go to start by the they go first for yahoo.com. Uh, yahoo.com make sure that you are in the US page of Yahoo. Okay, if you are if you are in a page of a, or any other country, you will not be able to access this information. Be sure that you are at yahoo.com uh, US page. After that, you click on Finance to access to Yahoo Finance and Yahoo Finance. We are going to put here in this box the symbol ticker ticker of my stock because I'm using McDonald's. The symbol ticker is MMCD. I just double check if I'm using the correct one. Okay. Now I have information concerning McDonald's. Uh, what I'm looking for is historical data of the past five years. So I go to historical data. Here I click on time period, five years. Okay, so start date is five years ago, but, but because I want the data from beginning of September, so be sure that you are using September 1st here. That's the only modification you have to do, otherwise you're not going to get the entire five years of information. Okay, I confirm done. Stock price is okay. Now I change, I want only the price at the end of the month. Huh? Monthly data. I apply. Now I have information here. Okay, how to explore this information. I am going to download this page. Download, I open this page here. Okay. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, a few manipulations to get information here. First of all, I don't care about open, high, low, and closing price and volume neither. So I define the four columns and delete these four columns. I just want the address close price. Why? Because this price takes into consideration the impact of dividends or stock splits. So I have a price here. 
I have my, my entire price. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take only the price. I'm going to find only the price of the month of September. So September 2016. I'm going to September 2015. So you use I recommend you use a color. To tag these lines with the color because it's much more easier to identify these periods. We need this is information you need to put in your uh, spreadsheet. So tag all this because we are going to eliminate the all the rest of information. So I tag oh yes. Now I well, I'm going to delete the information. I don't I don't need to use. So I define. Okay, I take from the periods between September September. I delete the data. Okay, I'm going to delete all this data. That I don't need to use. Now I have five years data. So let me just, I'm going to copy this data. I'm going out to my column of McDonald's. So put your name in your spreadsheets. New York Sheets is better to identify your stocks. And here as well, okay? I do, in price now, I do, I'm going to copy this data. So. What I recommend for you, do not paste this data here. Use paste special, only values, because if the previous spread, uh, Excel spreadsheet has any formula, you don't get this here, okay? Now look, I have my data, let's just double check, okay? 117.9588, I double check with my, sorry, my data here, and in fact, it's this one. 170.98.95.88.87. So this is correct. I have in all my price here. Okay. You see that all these columns we have already calculations because inside we have already formulas predefined. So we have nothing to do. Just put in the numbers, the figures here. And we have a formula defining okay. arithmetic average, geometric average and standard deviation okay all this is already done for you you have nothing to do now some stocks pay dividends or they're not how do i know if my stock pay dividends i go back to yahoo okay effectively okay mcdonald's pay dividends if you st your stock do not pay dividend no you don't do anything okay? if you pay dividends i have to take now this information so what i'm going to do is I'm going back here to Yahoo Finance. Instead of instead of historical price, I want I want a dividend only. Okay, I want all the dividend only over the same period of time. Frequency I'm going to put daily. Okay, because I want all dividends paid during this. Not only information at the end of the month. Because dividends are not necessarily paid at the end of the month. So I'm going to take dividends the day they were paid. Okay, I have here the and I'm going to do the same process. Now download this data in Excel. I open my page Excel here. So I got this page and I'm going to do as I know this in this case so dividends are paid in a quarterly basis. Okay, every quarter I pay. So I'm take one year dividend is four quarters. So to facilitate, again, I use one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, I need colors, okay? You guys are going to see this simplify and avoid mistakes in a moment, I'm going to calculate my dividends. All right, I'm going to take the total of dividends of this period, sum, I'm using Excel, 
I define the four periods, close my brackets, okay, here is equal sum, summation, I define my four periods again, I, I repeat this operation until you get my five years. Okay, one, two, three, four, that's my fourth year. Pay attention, do not copy the same information twice. And the last year, sum. Okay, now I have the total dividends paid every year from September to September. I am going to copy. Edit copy. I go back to my page and again when I'm going to paste, paste is special. Uh -huh. Paste is special only values. Otherwise you're going to copy a formula in order going to get the right information. If you don't do this, you just like I'm going to show here. If you don't copy the special and you paste here information like this, you're not getting anything. Okay. So pay attention when I do this. Now we get all information I need. Uh, dividends, price, for the holding period return as learning class taking take into consideration the price increase and the dividend pay during one year. Okay. So this is already calculated here. What I'm going to do, I need this, I need in my portfolio to define now sector e industry. Okay. I took for my for my report. I did last week the sector industry. If I don't do this, I go to Finvis. Okay, I put here McDonald's and I get sector and industry, service and restaurants. I go back to my Excel worksheet, services, and restaurants, because I want to identify. From where it comes from which sector comes my comes from my my stock my, my stock is coming from okay the capital I have invested how much I spent buying my stock so I go to stock track or to my report I put ten thousand if I I use ten thousand sixty dollars let's see we used around the ten thousand dollars you know every every stock was allocated at around the ten thousand dollars now I need to copy I need to put information here to get to start getting okay my portfolio this will be my portfolio expect return and standard deviation and this information I'm going to compare against the benchmark and see how which type of return I can expect my portfolio compared to S&P and what level of standard deviation risk compared to the risk on the S&P so I'll go back to McDonald's okay so my holding period of return is it will be I will be using the geom geometric average. So I copy this, I copy, go back to my portfolio, and I use paste the special. I don't I just want my value, otherwise you are going to get a wrong information. Okay. So I here I go back to my standard deviation. Let's get out from here, standard deviation. Edit copy. I go back to my portfolio and okay. editing paste the special values. Okay, and voila, let me just double check 1321, 7.73. I always double check your work. Okay, that's okay. okay. That's information. So this is correct. And I'm going to repeat again for each different stock, okay? Do not forget to put the name of stock here and here, okay? It will make it easier to identify your stocks in your page. So this page will be, this will be the first task, huh? the first assignment. We are going to complete this uh, spreadsheet with all the information we're going to learn in the chapter six, six and the next week in class. So the task is not yet finished, now we have to calculate the sharp ratio for all stocks 
the sharp ratio for a portfolio and the sharp ratio for for the s p so this you have to go to you have to go to uh what you learn in chapter five and see how the sharp ratio is calculate and put it here and here you make okay a small report so a small comment say how how the sharp ratios of each stocks are compared to the benchmark <clears throat> and how is the total sharp ratio of a portfolio compared to the s p what you want to know is how performing is your stock using sharp ratio measure compared to your benchmark okay we learned in class that sharp ratio is, is one of the best indicator to show how the returns of a portfolio portfolio of assets is performing comparing compare uh, each each other or comparing to the the benchmark you are using to evaluate your performance